Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different from what I normally do. I normally talk through ideas of physics and AP physics and help students to understand concepts related to that. But today I want to ask why questions. I want to ask why questions specifically about an early equation that we have in physics. It's called Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation. There's a constant in here. This is big G right here. And there's something really, really interesting to think about with this. In fact, I think this is something that probably all physics and AP physics students should think about. And that is, why is the gravitational constant seemingly set to allow for life to develop? And that's what I want to talk about for today. So let's go ahead and get to it. It turns out if this constant was something like one in a billion smaller of a value, then we wouldn't have had star formation in the way that we had and probably wouldn't have heavier elements like carbon and so on formed in our universe. Fusion would be impacted and heavy element formation would be impacted. In other words, life probably would not have developed if this was just a tiny bit less. And it turns out that if the G value was just a tiny bit greater, then it also would not have allowed for a life permitting universe. If it was something like one in a billion greater, we would have had a big crunch after a big bang. So it's set at a value that is precisely needed to allow for intelligent life to exist. And the question is why? Why is this G value set the way it is? And related questions with that. So that's what I want to talk about for today. We do want to address three major ideas that people have brought up in response to this, so they brought up ideas of chance, logical necessity, and the multiverse theory. So I'm going to be talking about those three concepts and the problems with those three concepts as to why the universe is seemingly set to allow for life to develop. So let's talk about chance, first of all. So what are the chances? Like, what if, what if the universe just happened to develop this way by chance? Well, to talk about this, I need to talk briefly about the idea of probability, some basic probability ideas that you probably already know about that I need to remind you of. So it turns out that if you have an unlikely event, like let's say you want to roll a six-sided die and get a one on that six-sided die. If you were to do that, that would be an unlikely event. It would be a one out of six chance. Well, what if you wanted to have two dies, both of them getting a one, you effectively are rolling snake eyes. What are the chances of that? Is that a 1 over 6 plus a 1 over 6? No, it's far less likely than that. It's actually a 1 out of 6 times a 1 out of 6. What that does is it makes it very unlikely to end up with snake eyes over here because we have to basically multiply an unlikely event times another unlikely event. So if I were to summarize this, it turns out that two unlikely things that both need to happen together at the same time for a desired outcome make that outcome even more unlikely. All right, so this is just a basic probability idea that I need to talk through, and I will apply it to some other things. It is likely that if I'm doing something interesting, then my cat will come forward and take a look. In any case, the question that I want to ask next is, are there other unlikely things besides the gravitational constant that need to be set up at a precise value to allow life to develop? And the answer is yes, most definitely. There are many of these things, and all of them are beyond the scope of this video right here, but I do want to just mention like three and give you a reference that you can take a look at. I'll also put this reference in the description of this video here. N, which is the ratio of the strength of electromagnetism to the strength of gravity for a pair of protons. If that was slightly greater or slightly lesser, it would radically change our universe in a way that would not allow for a life-permitting universe, as well as epsilon here, as well as omega. You can pause the screen if you want to look at that, but just know that there are many unlikely things that had to have had happened. So just to say that our universe happened by chance, I want you to think about what that would mean. It would be like one in a billion chance just for the gravitational constant times a one in a billion, let's say, chance for n and one in a billion chance for epsilon and one in a billion chance for omega. All of those multiplied together leading to an incredibly unlikely value. In other words, the chance for the universe to just be this way, just based on chance alone, is unimaginably small. So 
of those three possibilities that people sometimes give for why the universe is set up the way that it is, chance is so unimaginably small that this would happen just due to chance that it's literally beyond understanding how low that chance would be. Okay, well, let's look at our second option here, which is logical necessity. And I've created a little graphic for that. This argument does have legs to it. And that is, if we are in the present, looking back in time for the Big Bang, it is true that we live in a universe that allows for intelligent life to exist because we're here. We're intelligent life. We're able to look back in time and start to understand the physics that has allowed us to get here, so to speak. So it is true that we must, looking back, be in a universe that allows for intelligent life to exist. But that's not really the point. That's a, that's a misdirection. That's not talking about the Big Bang itself. So to illustrate this, I'm going to make a ridiculous analogy on purpose because that will make it stick better. So what do you mean? Well, what I mean is, if we were at Disneyland and we had amnesia and we started looking for clues at some distant time in the past, it would make sense that we would see that there would be things set up, decisions made and actions taken that would get us to Disneyland. So, of course, everything we found would imply that we had made decisions and there have been things set up in the past to get us to Disneyland with amnesia. However, if we were to consider the question differently and say, well, let's imagine we are at that some distant time in the past. Who says we had to go to Disneyland? It is not logically necessary if we begin our consideration from some time in the past. We don't have to go to Disneyland. There are a billion other places we could go to. There's nothing saying we have to go to Disneyland if we consider this from some time in the past. Okay, well, let's apply this to what I had talked about previously. It is true, if we consider the question, we are now in the presence, must there have been a universe that allows for intelligent life to exist? Yes, if we consider that from the present. That's not the question I want to ask. I'm asking about the Big Bang and the way the universe was set up originally altogether. So if we start from there, the question is, does there have to be a universe that allows for intelligent life to exist? And the answer is no. There is no logical necessity based reason why the universe has to exist in such a way as to allow for intelligent life to exist. If we consider from the beginning of the universe, from the Big Bang itself, it is not logically necessary for a life permitting universe to exist. So it turns out this second explanation does not make sense. We're going to put a line through that. The third one is a multiverse, and it's complex, but basically the multiverse is not really a scientific question, in my opinion. So what I mean by that is, to be a scientific question, you need to be able to propose and test things and work through the scientific method or some modified form of that. But just proposing that there is an infinite amount of universes around, but you cannot test them, you cannot measure them, you cannot interact with them, just doesn't really make sense as a scientific hypothesis. And it literally is just grasping at straws to avoid the logical problems that come out of this issue. So the multiverse is not a good explanation for why we live in a universe that allows for intelligent life to exist. I'm not going to give my opinion in this video as to why I think we live in a universe that allows for intelligent life to exist, but I am asking questions and discussing these ideas, and I pose the question to you, what is your explanation for why we live in a universe that is allowed for intelligent life to exist? What do you think? If you have an answer and you want to put it in a comment below, go for it. And if not, no worries. But in any case, if you're curious about ideas of physics and AP physics and you want to see more, then take a look in the playlist below. Take care and have a good day.